What's up Moralis community? Welcome to another Moralis tutorial video. Today we have a really cool project. This is a random NFT minter on which you can get one of three randomly selected NFTs. So the first step is connect your wallet. Once connected, let's click on the mint button. We have to pay a small fee. Let's confirm. And after the transactions went through, we can click on get my NFTs. And we are going to have a list of all the NFTs this wallet address has minted so far on this contract. This is going to be a really complex project because for the NFTs, we are going to use Chainlink BRF to generate random numbers. We are going to go through the scripts to upload the images and the metadata to IPFS using Morales. We are going to develop the smart contracts in Solidity and we are going to have two options to deploy both on Remix or using Brownie, the Python framework for smart contracts. And of course, we are going to create a backend and a frontend to create a full stack application. So if you want to know how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. What's up, YouTube? My name is Vasily, your Web3 instructor from Latin America, Ecuador. I've been building on the space since 2020 with cool crypto projects. In my free time, I really enjoy singing and playing the guitar. And if the time is good, I like to go out and take some meditations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the video and start building. Let's get started. Here I have a simple smart contract for an NFT with the standard things you will expect from a NFT, a token URI, a mean to function the NFT, a token counter, and so on. But we don't want simple things, do we? We are going to over-engineer this and make it a really advanced smart contract. But first, we need to talk about Chainlink. Chainlink is one of the biggest decentralized Oracle networks out there and it provides a lot of cool features and services for Web3 developers and companies. The most popular one is Chainlink data feeds, which give you the exchange information for a lot of crypto pairs on the blockchain. And you can get this information live. But today we are going to be focusing our attention on Chainlink BRF. Chainlink BRF is the way to get truly verifiable random numbers or over smart contracts. The way it works is kind of complex because they have a subscription manager on which we are going to pay the link token they use as a fee. And then when a smart contract asks for a random number, it's going to connect to a lot of decentralized nodes. In order to return a random number, we are going to use later on our smart contract. But randomness? We already can get a random number on a easiest way, right? Or on JavaScript, on Python, or any other programming language, we can use libraries like mat.random or random.random and get a random number. Why do we need such a complex scheme? Let me tell you that those numbers are not truly random. When you ask a computer for a random number, it's going to look into a space memory and it's going to say, okay, this is random enough and it's going to return you as a random number. But these numbers are actually pseudo-randomic and they are easy predictable and vulnerable to manipulation. So your decentralized application might be at risk if someone predicts which those random numbers are. So Chainlink uses a different approach because they are not getting that random number out of a single computer. They are getting that random number using a lot of different nodes, which allows you to get a truly random number. And why is this useful? Well, it has a lot of applications. First, we can build a fair RNG on our NFT games and collections, as we are going to do on this tutorial. We can choose a truly random representative for a decentralized autonomous organization, or we can also randomly assign duties and resources on a team or on another DAO. So as I told you, instead of using this simple NFT contract, we are going to use Chainlink BRF to get a random number, and with that random number, we are going to generate a random NFT. But first of all, we need to understand how to get that random number. So please go to the Chainlink documentation and follow along with me this part. Don't forget all the links are going to be on the video description, so check that now. For a basic implementation of the random numbers, Chainlink requires a Remix ID. This is the 
Solidity ID for Smart Contract Development, which works on any web browser. MetaMask, we already have it. And the Go Early Testnet, just be sure you have enough funds on your account to be able to deploy the smart contracts. So first thing first, let's open Chainlink Subscription Manager. Let's connect our wallet on the Go Early network because we are going to use the testnets for now. Let's connect MetaMask, sign over. Once we are connected, let's create a new subscription. This is going to use our wallet address. So let's create that subscription. We are going to trigger a new transaction. Let's confirm this. And on the meantime, that transaction goes through. I want to explain why we are doing that. And the reason they have a subscription manager is because we as the contract deployers are going to be able to pay the fees and not push our users to pay that link token fees we need in order to generate that random number. Once the subscription is created, we can add the funds and we need to provide some link token. Just go to faucet.chain.link, connect your wallet, pass the human verification and request your 10 testnet link tokens. Once the process is done, you can check the transaction details in order to get the information of the token you can add to your MetaMask in order to check your balance. So let's go back to brf.chain.link open my subscription and add new fonts. I have 10 link for this tutorial too, could be enough, but let's use all of the 10. Let's confirm this again, confirm the transaction. And now we can see that our subscription has a 10 link token balance. So with this subscription, we get a subscription ID. This ID is the one we are going to use on our smart contract in order to get that random number. So let's go back to the documentation and down here we have a button called open in remix. This is going to open us a template smart contract to get that random number, which uses BRF consumer base B2. Basically the logic is really simple. We are going to have a function called request random words, which is going to ask Chainlink BRF to connect to the independent nodes in order to get that random number. This request random words is going to have a request ID, which is going to be generated each time we call this function. And once the random number is generated by the nodes and returned to the smart contract, we are going to have an internal function called fulfill random words. This function is going to decide what happens when that random number returns to the user and is going to do whatever logic you want over here. So first thing first, let's go here, the deploy section, select injected provider MetaMask. I'm already connected on the GoEarly network and let's try to deploy. The constructor needs just one parameter, the subscription ID. So I'm going to take the subscription ID and paste it over here and click on deploy. This is going to trigger a new transaction as always. And once the process is done, we are going to have a new deployed contract over here, which is own address. So let's copy that address, go back to our subscription model. And here we need to add a new consumer. The consumer are going to be the lowest smart contracts, which are going to be able to use this IB and these funds to generate that random number. So let's click on add consumer and paste over here the smart contract address. Let's click on add consumer. Again, we have to approve this. Once the consumer is added, we can close this. And now we can return to our remix ID. Now we can use this function request random words, which as I told you is going to be the one responsible to ask for the BRF nodes to work in order to get that random number. And also this request random words is going to generate a request ID. We can call the last one clicking here. Once the Oracle returns the information with the random number, we can use this request ID and use it over here to request the status. And we are going to have this randomly generated number. And this is it. This is how Chinese BRF works. So let's apply all this logic of calling these request random words and the fulfill random words functions into our NFT smart contract. So I have another contract here called random NFT.sol, which is importing from Open Zeppelin, the RC20 standard, and also is going to be a ownable contract. 
Also, I have here some errors for error handling, and here I have a really standard smart contract implementation with just its name and its token initials. So let's get started with this. We need to import Chainlink VRF from official Chainlink package. So import at Chainlink contracts ERC the version BRF consumer base B2 and also the BRF coordination interface that's all I'm showing you right now the exact imports you must use but if you're not sure which kind of packages Chainlink has it's as simple as to go to github and check the official Chainlink repo with all the contracts they have over here and all the implementations you can use so this contract is already a ERC721 URI storage and it's ownable and now it's also going to be a BRF consumer base B2. Once we add this, this is going to mark us as an error because we have some implementation we must add. But don't worry about that now. I have some variables here. These variables are for the NFT. So let's say NFT variables. And let's talk about the actual NFTs. As I showed you at the beginning of the video, we are going to have three different types of NFTs. Let's say breed for NFTs. Let's create an enum of the breeds. They are going to be artificial, natural, and shiny. An enum on solidity works as an array, so artificial is going to be so artificial is going to be the index zero, natural one, and shiny. Too. Now let's make our compiler happy, adding all the information we need for the chaining BRF. Let's say a here chaining BRF variables, and we need to add a lot of this. We need the BRF coordinator, so BRF coordinator B2 interface. It's going to be a private variable, immutable, and let's name it I BRF coordinator. And now we need more variables over here in order to understand which ones we need we can go back to chaining documentation and here on supported networks we are going to go to our network here go early and we know we need the all these parameters the link token the brf coordinator address so let's create them we are going to need the subscription id we used before so uint64 private immutable Description ID and I'm going to do the exact same for the gas lane, the callback gas limit, the request confirmation and the number of words. And again, that information is over here and also you can check them on the remix contract. Now we need to create a helper for the chain link BRF. Remember I told you each time we ask for a random number, this request is going to have a request ID. So I want to map that request ID to the address of the person which is asking that random number. So let's create a mapping of uint256 to an address. It's going to be a public and it's going to be called s request ID to sender. Just as good practice, I'm going to add two events over here. And now let's use the constructor. The constructor is going to get all these parameters we just created as input when we are deploying the contract. So, address, BRF coordinator, version 2. The same for the subscription ID, the gas lane, the mint fee, and the callback gas limit. Finally, I'm also going to add a string array of the token URIs for the NFTs we are going to use as we are have three different reads, we are going to have three different token URIs. Now we have to declare on the constructor that BRF consumer base, so BRF consumer base B2, and we are going to send the BRF coordinator. We declared here as an input parameter. Now let's assign those variables. So I BRF coordinator equals to BRF coordinator interface with the BRF coordinator V2. And once again, the exact same for the gas line, the subscription ID and the callback goes limit. The token counter, I already have it at the beginning. But unfortunately, our contract is still mad with us because we have to implement some functions in order for this to work. So let's create a new function over here called request 
NFT. This request NFT is going to act as that request random words function we used before. It's going to be a public viable because we want the users to pay in order to get that NFTs and it's going to return that joint 265 the request ID I was talking about before. Let's say if the message dot value is less than the mean fee let's revert this transaction so revert random nft need more funds which is one of the errors i show you before also i don't have a mean fee yet so let's create that here on the nft variables let's create it you in five six private immutable i mean fee okay this is good this request id is going to be equal to the PRF coordinator dot request random words. And we are going to send the gas lane, the subscription ID, the request confirmations, the callback gas limit, and the number of words. And again, we are just using over and over again these exact same variables because they are the ones which are required by chaining BRF. So we are just copying the functionality of this BRF consumer .sol. We use it as example before. As we already have this request ID, we can use that, that helper I created before in order to map the request ID to the message.sender. And now we can emit that NFT requested event I created before. And that's it. With this request NFT, we are going to request that random words. But as you can see, the compiler is still mad at us. And you might know already why, because remember, this is the first part. We need to call the request random words in order to get the random number from the Oracle. Now we need to decide what we are going to do with that random number. So we need to implement that function fulfill random words, which is going to take the request ID and of course the array of the random words. In this case, it's just going to be one because the number of words we are requesting is just one. It's going to be a memory random words. This function should be internal. And also as this function already exists we need to override its functionality so let's create a new address called nft owner which is going to use that mapping using the request id that's why we created that to assign the address of the message.sender so we can use it as the new nft owner let's create a uint 256 for the new item id this is going to use the token counter. Of course, we need a new ID each time a new NFT is minted. So the token counter is going to be equal to token counter plus one. And now we have to decide what we are going to actually do with the, that random number. So let's create here a function get chance array, which is going to determine how probably we are going to get one of those NFTs. It's going to return an uint. 256 is going to be an array of three elements in memory. This array is going to store all the chances we are going to have to get one of those monsters. Remember, we have three breeds, artificial, natural, and shadow. And let's say shadow is going to be the rarest one. So I want to return over here. So I'm going to say return. The index zero is going to have 10 out of 100 chances to appear. The second one is going to have, let's say, a 25% chances to appear. So let's put here 35. Why? Because 35 minus 10, it's 25. And now let's put 100. Again, we are going to add this up. This is 45 and 100 minus 45 is 55. So this is going to be the NFT, which is going to be the most probable to spawn. Let me explain better how this is going to work. We know we have a random number. So we are going to have a modded ERNG, which is going to be equal to that random number, module 100. The reason is because this is going to always returns a number between zero and 99. And we can use that on this array. So if the modded ERNG is from zero to nine, is going to be equal 
to shadow if the motor ERNG is between 10 and 35 it's going to be a natural and if the motor ENG is between 36 and 99 it's going to be an artificial the most common one monster easy isn't it so let's apply that logic over here let's say join 256 motor ERNG going to be equal to the random words in the index 0 module 100 remember these random words returns an array we are just asking for one random number right now but we can get more of those so that's why we are asking for the index zero now we have this modern ERNG on the range from 0 to 99 we can now ask for the breed so let's create another function over here function get breed from modded RNG this is going to receive that modded RNG remember from 0 to 99 it's going to be a public your function and it's going to return a breed remember we created that enumeration here 0 1 and 2 and I'm going to create a really interesting math over here so let's create a uint 265 total sum is going to be equal to 0 we are going to have a uint 265 an array of those of length 3 which is going to get this chance array over here and now we are going to use a for loop so for join 256 i equals to 0 i less than the chance array dot length which we know it's 3 e plus plus i'm going to say if the motor erng it's greater than the total sum and the motor ERNG is less than the total sum plus the chains array of that index, return the read on that index. If not, well, let's just add to that total sum. Let me explain how this, this is going to work. Let's suppose the motor RNG is equal to 12 for say percent. Let's also the index of i is going to start on 0 and of course the total sum is going to start on 0. So let's suppose we get a 12 when we do that, this math over here. Remember, it's going to return a number between 0 and 99. So let's suppose we got a 12. So the motor RNG is greater than the total sum. Well, yes, because the total sum is 0 and the motor ERNG is less than the total sum plus the chains array the chains array here on the first index is 10 0 plus 10 is 10 is not greater than the modded rng so this is going to be false we are not going to return the read and we are going to add up to that total sum so now the total sum is going to be i now is going to be 1 and the chains array on the index 1 is going to be 35 so let's do the math again. Motor ERNG is greater than the total sum. Yes, the motor ERNG is less than the total sum plus the chains array. Okay, so the total sum is 10 plus 35. This is 45. And of course, 12 is less than 45. So we are going to return that breed on the index i. The index i, remember, is natural because index 0 artificial, index 1 natural, and index 3 shadow. As easy as that. And just to be cautious, maybe the math goes crazy, let's just revert the transaction if something goes wrong over here. So now, we can also add that breed to our NFT. So let's continue on fulfill randomness, and let's put here breed, breed equals to get read from motor rng and use that this motor rng variable and the only thing we have left here on this fulfill randomness is to actually mint that nft so save mint remember this save mint function comes already with the erc721 standard so we don't have to implement that function we are going to send over the nft 
owner and the new item ID. And also we want to set the token URI. And the token URI is going to take that new item ID and the token URIs based on this token URIs we are sending as parameter over here, which again is going to use that read to get the information. Finally, I'm just going to emit an event over here. And yeah, this is it. We did it. We called this request random words in order to ask to the Oracle to create a new random number. And then we use this fulfill random words once we get the response to mint a new random NFT based on the math I just explained. Now, just to have good practices, let's create some getters over here. I'm going to do it really, really fast. So we need a getter to determine the mint fee, want to get the token URIs, and want to know if the contract is initialized or not. And finally, let's add some touches over here. As we are using a mint fee in order for the users to pay for the NFTs, let's create a withdrawal function for the owner of the contract to receive those funds. So a simple withdrawal function over here. And also this get NFT token URIs is using this variable we have over here, NFT token URIs. I'll show you at the beginning of this smart contract, but we are not using this at any time. So let's create another function called initialize contract. Let's put it over here. And this initialized contract is just going to take those NFT token URIs we used as constructor parameter and add those to the variable NFT token URIs and set the initialized value to true. So we just have to add that function here on the constructor as well. And this is it. This is a really complex and advanced smart contract to create random NFTs using Chainlink BRF. How do we know this works? Well, let's test this out. So, so the first thing we need to prove is the contract actually compiles, so Brownie compile. And yes, it seems everything goes okay, but wait a second. Maybe you might be thinking, okay, I understand Solidity code, but I never used Brownie before, so how can I do this on Remix? Don't worry, because if you check the GitHub repo, you are going to find another contract Shows a similar of this one called Random NFT for Remix, on which you are going to be able to use all of this, but on Remix. And instead of using those variables as input parameters on the constructor, we already declared them out at the beginning. And you just have to add here the token URIs you want to use for your NFTs and of course the subscription ID you are going to get from Chainlink. With that said, let's deploy this using Brownie. For time sake, we are going to go through this process really quick. So first of all, I have a script here called helpful scripts, which has a function called get account and it's going to return me the account depending on the context. So let's deploy that random NFT. We need to provide the IPFS URLs for our NFTs and here the things get more interesting. If you check out the code repo, you are going to find this upload to IPFS. So basically, this is a simple Python script, which is going to take all the images we have on this image folder, the artificial monster, the nature one and the shadow one, and upload the image to IPFS. Then on this IPFS upload, we are going to take that IPFS image script and use it to create all the metadata. I just made up some descriptions and statistics over here. You can change, you can change however you want. And of course, you can change these images and put maybe 5, 10, 100, all the ones you want. As this is a tutorial, of course, I just have three simple NFTs. This IPFS upload script uses the Moradi's endpoint upload folder for IPFS. So, and of course, we have a cool video on that matter. I highly recommend you to watch if you want to learn how to accomplish this and understand how this API endpoint works. If not, as I told you, this script is good enough for you to just use it however you want. 
you just have to add here your Morales API key on your .env file and that's it. You can use this to loop through all the images on this folder, add all the descriptions, abilities and help points you want. This is going to loop over those and return you with all the IPFS addresses you are going to need for that metadata. IPFS addresses like this one on which you are going to have all the information that I just showed you and also the link for the image of that monster. As easy as that. So let's go back to the code on deploy random NFT and I'm going to add that IPFS directions I already have. I'm also declaring the mint fee. Remember, we need this on the constructor on our smart contract. And here, let's deploy it. So first of all, the easiest part is to say account equals to get account. The script I created here on helpful scripts to get account depending on the context. And we need here some parameters you already know. We need the BRF coordinator, the subscription ID, the gas lane, the mean fin, the callback gas limit, and all of this stuff. On Brownie project, we always have a Brownie config.yaml, and here I already have set up all the dependencies we need for these smart contracts, and also for the Guardian network, which is the one we are using, I have the subscription ID, the callback gas lane, the gas line address, the VRF coordinator address, the link token, and etc. And maybe if you want to deploy this smart contract to a mainnet, I already left you here the information for that network as well. The only thing I'm going to change over here is the subscription ID because we just created a new one. So I'm going to copy over this and paste it on my brownie config.yaml. Let's save this and go back to the code. So now we can get all that information from the configuration file. So for example, PRF coordinator is going to be equal to config networks network show active. Remember, we want to deploy this on the Goerli network. PRF coordinator v2, which is the exactly name I put it over here. PRF coordinator v2. And we're going to do the exact same for the rest of the parameters we need. So the same goes for the subscription ID, the gas lane, and the callback gas limit. And remember, if you don't know where to get that information, besides my brownie config.yaml, remember you can always go to Chainlink PRF documentation and you're going to have that information over here for the Coerly testnet and all the other supported blockchains. So now let's deploy this contract. So random NFT is going to be equal to random nft dot deploy and let's put here all the variables we need so we need the prf coordinator the subscription id the gas lane the mean feed the callback gas limit and the ipfs urls remember when you are deploying a smart contract with parameters on the constructor using brownie remember to use the exact same order as you have on your actual constructor on the smart contract so if you have VRF coordinator on the position zero, also use VRF coordinator on the position zero. Of course, we need to sign this transaction. So I'm going to do that from my account. And I also want to verify this contract. So public source, config, networks, network show active, get verify. Again, this configuration comes from this brownie config.yaml and the for Goerly network is set up to true. Now let's print the address of this NFT contract and return it in case we want to use it on different contexts. And yeah, this is it. This is the deployment script we needed. And in order to deploy this, we need three things. A wallet private key, a ether scan API key, and an Infura project ID. All of those we are going to set up here on the dot all of those we are going to set up here on the .env file. So let's go through that process really quick. On our MetaMask, let's select the account we want, account details, port private key, put the password, confirm, and we are going to have the private key for this wallet. Remember, not share this with anyone. On Infura, please be sure you have a project creator. Click on manage key, and you have to copy this API key 
and paste it on your dot and file and for ether scan is the same go to ether scan log in to your account go to api keys and copy one of the api keys you can get for free if you paste all that information here on your dot m file well you're going to have all the things you need just remember on brownie config.yaml you have to specify dot m in order for brownie to know where to find those things so in this context we need to get with all of that we are ready to deploy this smart contract so as we already know this compiles properly let's clear my console and let's say brownie run scripts deploy random nft dash dash network world let's hit enter and this should work properly the transaction goes through and now let's just wait once the process is done we are going to get the address of that smart contract and as we are using etherscan api we have that contract already verified so let's go to goerly.etherscan.io paste that address over here look for that and look we have that random nft contract so we can go to the contract tab as this contract is verified we can get all the code for that but we can also interact with the contract so for example let's just connect metamask over here let's get the mint fee and the mint fee is this amount of weight and we might also want to use this request nft functions and put here the value 0 0.001 but this is not going to work and you might already know the reason we just deploy it a smart contract and we have its address however we should go to our chainlink admin panel and add this contract as a consumer so let's paste over here that address add consumer let's accept and confirm that transaction once the transactions go through we can return to our brf subscription model let's reload this and now we have two consumers so now we can actually use that function we wanted to use over here so let's click on write we are going to paste some gas let's confirm this go to the metamask and open that on the block explorer and let's wait once the transaction finishes we can check that we already have that nft so we can use one of morales endpoints get nfts by wallet put here the wallet or the goerly testnet and let's click on try it and boom we get the information of the nfts we have i have more than one because i already mint one before this part of the video and this is great we just created a deploy script for this really advanced nft contract which uses chaining brf of course there are some parts i didn't went through for example this mint nft script for example this mint nft script or the scripts to upload to ipfs just for time sake and remember all the code of the lesson is going to be on the description so check that out and just like that we just finish it the chaining brf section the ipfs section and the deployment section the only thing left is to create a simple front end connect it to this smart contract and also have a back end connected to the Morales API in order to get information out of the blockchain just as I showed you here using this endpoint. This is going to be a really straightforward process so let's go for it. So I have a frontend you already saw before which these buttons to connect the wallet to mint the NFTs and get the NFTs of the collection. In order to use the smart contract functions on the frontend we need three things. The signer which is going to be the one we have on metamask so the signer is already here and we need the contract abi and the contract address and of course we can come back to etherscan and get the contract abi from here and the contract address but as we are using brownie to deploy this smart contract we can send that information to the front end folder as you can see here i have a front end folder here so i can send all the information to this folder when you compile a smart contract using brownie you are going to have this build folder and here on deployments you are going to have the information of the contract abis and also a map.json which is going to have 
the addresses of the deployed contracts. So here on my scripts, I have a simple script called update frontend, which is going to take the information out of this build folder and send it over to the frontend to a new folder called chain info inside of and I'm going to also send over the brownie config.yaml as a good practice. So let's use that brownie run scripts and instead of using deploy let's use update frontend and I'm going to choose Guerli just to be able to send the information of that network which ID is 5 and once this is done here on the frontend folder I have this new folder called chain info in which I'm going to have all the information I want well for to get the ABI and also the deployment address so let's close all the things we are not using right now and let's get started with the front end here on the app.js first of all be sure you import from eaters remember npm install eaters this is the library we are going to use to connect metamask to our web page and we need to take the contract address and the contract ABI again this is from chain info contracts random nft.json and the deployments on the map.json so here i'm going to have two variables contract which is going to take that random nft deployment address and the contract abi which is going to get all the functions we need so here i have a new function called handle connect this is going to create a new provider using ether.js get the account with it request accounts and then get a signer remember i told you we need a signer a contract abi and a contract address. These ones we already have here and we are going to get the signer from the accounts once the user authenticate themselves using MetaMask. Then I'm just going to update these variables we are going to use later. The signer, the account, and something to check if the user is connected. We are going to use this handle connect function every time we click on that connect button, the one we have over here. So we can click on connect, sign this with the cone we want connect and that's it now let's talk about this mint function again we are going to use ether.js to trigger that function let's go back to the code and here we have is a really simple function called handle meet it's going to take the nft contract from ethers ethers contract again send the contract address the ibi and the signer we already have all of those we are going to get the mint fee remember in ether scan we used that function get mint fee to get the minimum amount we need to mint that those NFTs. So we are using the exact same function over here. And then once we got that mint fee, we are going to send a new transaction. NFT contract, request NFTs. Remember, this is the name we used to request a new NFT. We are sending over a gas limit and the value. The value is going to be the value we just got. And we are going to wait until that transaction goes. Go back to the front end, click on mint. This is going to trigger a transaction on which we are going to have to pay 0.001 ETH. Let's confirm this. And on the meantime, this transaction goes by. Let's talk about this get NFTs. This is the part of the video for us to use that Morales endpoint I showed you before to get the NFTs. On this case, we are going to use this endpoint called get owners by contract as we are going to have a just a small portion of elements. Let me make this bigger for you to be able to see it properly. Let's click on try it. And then we are going to have the response of all the NFTs this contract has because I minted a lot more. And also look at this, this contract call went really good. So yes. So the only thing left for us is to add functionality to this get my NFTs button. So let's use this endpoint on the backend project. On my code, I have a folder called backend, which contains a Django project. And here I have a script called services.py. This services.py is using that get NFT owners endpoint to get all the NFT owners on a specific smart contract. We also have a video on this specific endpoint if you want to check that out. On this case, I'm just sending over the address as parameter and I'm going to set all the other parameters as fixed ones because for this use case, we are just going to use go early. This services.py is used here on my project views as a new view called get owners, which is going to get that address from the front end transform it into a JSON and return the information again to the front end. Just don't forget, we have to add that endpoint to 
or project settings as well. So on the front end code, I have another function here called refresh NFTs, which is going to connect to that endpoint we just created, send over the contract address we got from chain info, and this is going to update a variable called NFTs with all the information we got out that response, which as you can see is this big JSON. Over here I have a variable called render NFTs, which is going to map all that response and create a card out of each one of those. And I'm going to take the most important information, such as the image, the name, the description, the token ID, and the attributes this NFT has. And I'm triggering this refresh NFTs each time I press the get my NFTs button. So let's connect again the wallet over here and let's click on get my NFTs. And as you can see here, we get the NFTs this wallet has. The important part here is to check if the NFT.owner of is equal to the account. So for example, let's disconnect this account over here and connect the account number two. So let's connect this, connect. Okay, this is connected. And if I click on get my NFTs, we are going to get a different response because this wallet address has different NFTs for this contract. And that was it. This was our project in which we can connect our wallet, mint a random NFT using Chainlink, and get the information of all the NFTs each user has on this smart contract. Some parts of the video we didn't go through as detailed as the smart contracts because we have a specialized video for that endpoints. But remember, all the code we use on this project is on the GitHub repo on the description. So you can clone that repo and use this as a template for any future NFT projects you might want to have. And yes, on this case, we just used three different breeds for teaching purposes, but you can use the same logic to a large big collection of 100, 500, 1000 NFTs. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial so far. Thank you for watching till the end and please leave your comments down below. Subscribe to see more content and I'll see you on the next occasion. Bye.